Houthi rebels in Yemen have agreed to a 72-hour ceasefire with the government. The truce is set to begin Wednesday at midnight local time. The UN Special Envoy to Yemen, the US and the UK have been calling on the warring parties to stop fighting. Now, President Abdurrabu Mansur Hadi says the ceasefire will be extended if it is not violated by the Houthis. Now, Houthi rebels are allied with the former president, Ali Abdullah Saleh. In September of 2014, the rebels took control of the capital, Sana'a. A Saudi-led coalition intervened in March of last year to help the internationally recognized government of President Hadi. Now, the UN estimates nearly 10,000 people, including 3,800 civilians, have been killed in the conflict. And Yemen is the Arab world's poorest country. Now, since the conflict began, some two and a half million people have been displaced and in dire need of humanitarian assistance. Mike Hanna has the latest now from the United Nations. All parties have committed to a resumption of the ceasefire in Yemen. This has been confirmed by the UN Special Envoy for Yemen, who says that the ceasefire initially for a period of three days will come into effect at midnight on October the 19th, effectively coming into play from Thursday onwards. Now, both the Yemeni government and the Houthi rebels have agreed to the ceasefire. Earlier on in the day, the government said it was prepared to accept a ceasefire on condition uh, that the Houthi rebels allowed humanitarian supplies into the besieged city of Taiz. However, there is no such precondition in the agreement that we've seen, although the special envoy does say expects all parties to allow full access to humanitarian aid. Now, importantly, yet another party to this ongoing conflict, Saudi Arabia, also said earlier that it would accept a ceasefire on condition that the Houthi rebels accepted the ceasefire and continued to observe it. Now, all of this against a background of ongoing conflict, reports of engagements continuing throughout the day. However, we now have formal announcement from the UN of a cessation of hostilities. And Sama Al Hamdani is a fellow with Sana'a's Center for Strategic Studies. She joins us live now from Washington, D.C. Hi there, uh, Sama. Now, how optimistic are you that this ceasefire could work? So the ceasefire is going to take place. How long is it going to last? I'm not that optimistic about it, just because if we look at the past, they haven't been that successful at holding ceasefire. So ceasefire doesn't mean that they're going to proceed in and then have peace talks. It just means that they're going to stop shooting at each other. Now, the ceasefire is going to begin tomorrow, so Wednesday time before midnight. Right now, there is bombardment taking place in Sana'a. There's ongoing fighting in Taiz and other areas. So right now, even though there is a ceasefire coming up, uh, they're still going at it. So hopefully, once the ceasefire takes place, they can both uphold uh, to the agreement and respect that they will allow humanitarian aid in. And hopefully, we see it proceed forward. But we've seen this happen before in Yemen. Now, but Sano, you were talking about uh, the ongoing airstrikes, but in addition to this, we also have the Houthis that are very strong on not wanting to withdraw from key towns, in addition to handing over yep. their weapons. So where did this leave things in terms of the bigger picture to bring an end to this conflict? So, realistically speaking, the government is no longer the strongest power on the ground. There are now a lot of militias and other forces on the ground. So there are a lot of local actors that they're not involving in this peace talk. They're not involving in their uh, settlement. And they're just concerned with the Houthi militia. The Houthi militia and former President Saleh have proven themselves to be very um, stubborn and they don't care about the Yemeni people. They refuse to go back to Sada and they refuse to allow Aden. And so it seems that we're dealing with someone who's very stubborn. And I think for the sake of the Yemeni people, we need to now think of the Houthis as a faction that needs to be offered a uh, part in the future government. Uh, they're not just going to withdraw and go back to Saada and hand over the weapons when a lot of other actors on the ground have weapons and when the government is not, you know, they're not going to be handing the city to the government. It's going to be, if the Houthis do leave the cities, it's going to be uh, lawless. And so in a sense, they need to think about that. Who's going to take charge? Uh, would the Houthis have an active role in the future? Will they be maintaining peace? If they are part of the future government, uh, if they create a new transitional government and the Houthis have a share in that, then we are more likely to see peace take place in Yemen. Is that a possibility in your opinion? 
I think so. Um, the talks have been really long, and I think as far as we all heard uh, behind the scenes, Saudi Arabia was really looking forward to peace, and the Houthis, uh, due to their lack of political uh, pretty much intelligence, did not know how to handle the peace talks properly. Not to forget that the Houthi and the former President Saleh are allied right now, but this alliance is not actually that strong, meaning that it's really hard for them to agree amongst themselves uh, before they can agree to any deals uh, that the U.N. puts on the table. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Saudi Arabia and the Gulf are ready for something, but um, hopefully for the sake of the Yemeni people, we can move forward. The humanitarian crisis is really severe, and the U.S. is finally paying attention to what's happening in Yemen. And when I say the U.S., I'm talking about the media here and the people. Sam al not the government. Thank you very much indeed for your thoughts.